This is Thriving Thoughts, the podcast that teaches you how to change your thoughts so you can change your life. I'm Dr. Sherry, clinical psychologist turned thoughtologist and truth teller. Welcome to season seven, where you'll learn to be gentle and deliberate with your words so that together we learn what it really means for women to encourage, uplift, and empower one another. Twice per week in five-minute episodes, we'll dissect popular phrases women say to one another, expose the lies hiding beneath their surface that perpetuate problematic ideals, and learn how to speak true encouragement so we uplift ourselves and others. Are you ready to speak truth over the lies and be an empowered woman who empowers other women? Start with this truth. A woman who changes her world changes the world. Let's go. Today, I want to encourage you instead of teaching you how to encourage someone else. I invite you to consider this truth. How you talk about yourself shows up in who you are. I love you. Yes, even if I don't know you, I love you as a human being, a woman, as a person who's being equipped to live a life that thrives. And that love often expresses itself in one word. Stop. I don't add a please to it. And if the person I'm saying it to keeps talking, I continue to repeat the word, relenting only when indeed they do stop. This is a practice I use regularly with my coaching clients and friends because I refuse to let them convince themselves to stay in old, harmful patterns. I refuse to let you stay there too, so listen closely. How you talk about yourself shows up in who you are. You're likely to find yourself in one of these examples. These are actual phrases uh, my friends and thought coaching clients have used to which I've replied, stop. Number one, I've always been late. I just don't feel time pass. It's just part of me, I guess. Number two, I struggle with standing up for myself. I always have. Number three, I just can't keep up. I'm overwhelmed. Number four, I know I've just always been the one who wants to keep the peace. And number five, I have a hard time trusting people or letting them in. If you found yourself in one of those self-descriptions, you're not alone. And just as in those real-world experiences, I will tell you, too, to stop. Here's why. There are four commonalities among those statements. Number one, it's a description of the past. Number two, it's not just a description of behavior. It's an incorporation of that behavior into your identity. Number three, it's an absolute description with words like always. Number four, it's turned into permission to be that way right now, as though your choices are predetermined by your past. I want to scream stop because engaging in these types of self-descriptions keep you stuck struggling and just surviving. There is an alternative, one of thriving, to show up in a way that allows you to grow, not in a way that leaves you stagnant. Let me walk you through yours. I want you to fill in the blank with the first thing that comes to mind. I struggle with blank. I've just always been that way. Again, I struggle with blank. I've just always been that way. I struggle with believing in myself is a statement I used to say to describe myself. I want you to keep yours in mind as we walk through why it keeps you stagnant and how to change your self-description. What you're actually describing is a habit, but you're describing it in terms of a fixed part of you, an unchangeable part of that. And if we convince ourselves through the power of our words that we can't change something about ourselves, what are we bound to do? That's right, we'll keep repeating it because after all, it's just who I've always been and the unspoken phrase, so it's just who I'll always be, that follows, makes sure it will be. Rinse, wash, and repeat. That cycle ends right here. Here are three rules for you to follow when describing yourself. Number one, describe the behavior without judgment. Instead of, I've always struggled with believing in myself, which I know is horrible, for example, I'll report the thought that used to come into my mind. I used to think to myself, I don't know if I have what it takes. I don't say it's bad of me to think that way or it's a horrible habit. I simply describe the behavior. Yep, thoughts are behavior, by the way. Number two, relegate the behavior to the past. I used to have that thought. And number three, speak to how you are changing that old habit by creating a new one right here, right now. For example, I used to have the thought, I don't know if I have what it takes. Now, when that thought comes up, 
I speak truth over it and I say, I have a gift and I owe it to myself to show up and use it. So here I am. The outcome of this new way of describing myself puts me in the position of choice, not my past behavior. It puts me in the mindset of thriving because I have the power to choose new behaviors and thoughts. And so do you. You are the authority over your present. So stop giving your authority to the past and start describing yourself in terms of who you are choosing to be right now. Speak truth over lies and you will thrive.